Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into an essential topic for any healthcare professional, fluid replacement in bends using the Evans and Parkland's formulas. These formulas are lifesavers literally, and understanding them can make a huge difference in patient outcomes. Let's make this simple and easy to grasp, so stick with me until the end. First up, let's break down the Evans formula. Imagine you're treating a patient with severe bends, second, third, or fourth degree bends, covering a large portion of their body. How do you calculate the fluid they need to survive? That is where the Evans formula comes in. Here is how it works. So first up, we have the colloids, like blood plasma and dextran. So you need to calculate one mil for every kg of the patient's body weight, then multiply by the percentage of the body bent. Secondly, we have the electrolytes, such as normal saline or lingers lactate. Again, one mil per kg per percentage of the body bent. Lastly, we have glucose, which is 5% in water. So you need to give 2000 mils to account for the insensible loss. So that is the fluid lost through evaporation and breathing. So the key point is that fluid replacement is a 24 hour game. You will give half of the calculated fluids in the first eight hours post bend. The rest, you spread it out evenly over the next 16 hours. So when it comes to administration on day one, you need to administer half the colloids and electrolytes and all of the glucose solution. Then on the second day, you need to reassess the patient's response, adjust the fluids based on their vital signs and overall condition. Let's walk through a practical example to solidify your understanding of the Evans formula. So you have a 70 kg adult male who has suffered second degree bends over 30% of his body surface area. You need to calculate the fluid replacement using the Evans formula. So what I need you to do, just pause the video and then start calculating and then come back, okay? Let's continue. So, step one, first of all, you need to calculate for the colloids, that is uh, blood plasma and the dextran. So, what you need to do is one mil multiplied by the body weight. So, the body weight of this person is 70 kg. So, that is one mil multiplied by 70, multiplied by the uh, body surface area that is the bent which is 30%. So you have one mil multiplied by 70 by 30, which is going to give you 2,100 mils. Okay, so it means you've calculated for the colloids. Then step two, you need to calculate for electrolytes, which is a normal saline or Lingers lactate. So on this one, that is one mil multiplied by the body weight, which is 70, multiplied by the uh, bent surface area, which is 30%. You're also going to get 2,100 mils. Then step three, you need to calculate for glucose, which is for the insensible loss. So with glucose, this value is always set at 2,000 mils for insensible loss regardless of weight or bent uh, percentage. So for glucose, it's just going to be 2000 mils. So having calculated for those, now you need to find out the total fluid volume that you can give in 24 hours. So the total, you're going to add everything together. So the total that we found for the colloids, electrolytes, and D for glucose. So you're going to do 2,100 mils plus 2,100 mils. Then you also add D, uh, 2,000 mils for glucose, which is going to give us 6,200 mils. So that is going to be the total volume that we can give in 24 hours. Hours. Now, 
we need to know the fluid administration timeline. Remember we said you give in the first eight hours and then the remaining you also give those are in, in 16 hours. So in the first eight hours, you need to administer half of the total calculated fluids. So the total calculated is 6,200. So half of it, meaning we need to divide by two, which is going to give us 3,100 mils, which you can administer in the first eight hours. Then the remaining, we need to give any uh, 16 hours so you need to administer the other half in 16 hours so you can do 6200 minus 3100 mils or you can still divide the total amount by 2 which is 6200 divided by 2 which is equal to 3100 mils to be given in the remaining 16 hours Having calculated for those things, it means that on the first day, post bains, you can give half of the colloids, which is 1,050 mils, and then half of the electrolytes, which is 1,050 mils. In case you're wondering where this is coming from, remember, when we calculated for the colloids, the total amount was 2,100, electrolytes, it was 2,100. So on the first day, you need to give half of that which is 1,050 mils. Then you also need to give all of the glucose, which is 2,000 mils for the insensible loss. Then on day two, you need to reassess the patient's vitals and response. Then adjust fluid administration as needed based on their overall condition. So the key takeaway from this is that by following the Evans formula, you ensure the patient gets the correct amount of fluid to manage the pain effectively while constantly adjusting based on their physiological response. Now let's move on to the Parkland's formula. This one is a bit more straightforward, but just as important. So the formula is as follows. Fluid requirements, which is equal to the total body surface area bent in percentage multiplied by weight multiplied by four mils. So this formula is simple, right? But it's a lifesaver in emergency situations. So when it comes to fluid administration, you need to give half of the total fluid in the first eight hours post bend, and then the remaining half you administer over the next 16 hours. Let's put the Parkland's formula into action with a practical example. Imagine you are in the emergency room and a 30-year-old patient weighing 70 kg comes in with severe bends covering 40% of their total body surface area. Your task is to calculate the fluid requirements for the first 24 hours using the Parkland's formula. Let's do a step-by-step -step calculation. So first thing is the formula. And our formula is fluid requirements, which is equal to the total body surface area bent in percentage multiplied by weight in kgs multiplied by formula. Now that you know the formula, you need to plug in the numbers. So it's going to be 40 multiplied by 70 multiplied by 4, which is going to give us 11,000 200 mils. Okay, now that we know the fluid which is required, we need to know how we can administer this fluid. Meaning, in the first eight hours, you're going to give half of the total fluid. Meaning, the 11,200 mils you're going to divide by two, which is going to give us 5,600 mils. This means you need to infuse 5,600 mils of fluid in the first eight hours. So to find out the hourly rate, you need to divide by eight. So which is going to be 5,600 mils divided by eight, which is going to give us 700 mils per hour, meaning every hour we're going to be giving 700 mils. And for the next eight hours, meaning 700 multiplied by eight is still going to give us 
5,600 meals. So for the next 16 hours, you're going to give the remaining half. Meaning from that total 11,200, we've already removed 5,600 for the first eight hours. So what is remaining is 5,600 for the next 16 hours. So for these remaining 16 hours, you need to calculate the hourly infusion rate, which is going to be 5,600 divided by 16, and it's going to give you 350 mils per hour. Okay, so in summary, this is what we've done so far. The infusion rate for the first eight hours, you're going to give um, 700 mils per hour. And then for the next 16 hours, you're going to infuse 350 mils per hour. Okay, so now after you've done all this, you need to monitor the patient. So you need to keep a close eye on the patient's urinary output. So when you're looking at the urinary output, you're aiming for 30 to 60 mils per hour. You also need to keep a close eye on the blood pressure and also the electrolytes levels. Then you can adjust the infusion rate if needed based on the patient's response and condition. So the key takeaways from this is that this approach helps ensure that the patient gets adequate fluid resuscitation while minimizing the risk of complications like fluid overload or under resuscitation. So how do you decide the volume, composition and rate of fluid? It's based on a few key factors. One, the total bent surface area, patient's weight, hourly urinary output, atrial blood pressure, hematocrit levels, and the serum electrolytes, especially potassium and D sodium. In some cases, an adult might need up to 500 mils per hour to keep their urinary output at a healthy 30 to 60 mils per hour. When monitoring the patient, make sure that you check the hematocrit levels every four to six hours. Also keep a strict input and output chart. Make sure the fluids are running at the right pace. If it is too slow, the patient could go into shock. If it is too fast, you risk overloading the circulatory system. The signs of overload, it's when the urinary output exceeds 100 mils per hour in the first 48 hours. The patient shows signs of pulmonary edema like shortness of breath and coughing. An indwelling catheter should be placed immediately upon admission to monitor urinary output, which is crucial for determining fluid needs and assessing kidney function. Here's the target for urinary output. In adults, it's 25 to 30 mils per hour. In children, 20 to 25 mils per hour. And in infants, 10 to 20 mils per hour. If the output drops below normal, alert your team immediately. This could be a sign that something is wrong. And there you have it, the Evans and Parkland's formulas demystified. Fluid management in bands is critical, and now you are equipped with the knowledge to handle it. Remember, it's all about staying vigilant, reassessing constantly, and adjusting as needed. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content designed to help you ace your medical journey. See you in the next one.